Jihad is an obligation for all Muslims. It can be carried out with a sword, the tongue, the pen, and with money. Our third lesson is on jihad, surely one of the more famous Arabic words. Jihad does not mean holy war, although it includes holy war. Jihad actually means struggle, and if you view jihad as that way, it's a much better way because jihad includes many things. As we'll see as we go on, jihad can be done with the sword, the mouth, the pen, and with money. The Quran calls jihad fighting in Allah's cause, so I think that pretty well establishes what we're doing here. The Quran lays out the vision of jihad, the sirah, Muhammad's life, lays out the grand strategy of jihad, and the hadith give us the tactics, all of the small details that need to be done. And of course, all of these things are modeled upon Muhammad, because Muhammad is not only the perfect Muslim, he is indeed the perfect jihadist. You can see how important jihad is when you read Muhammad's biography, the Sirah. Jihad takes up about three quarters of Muhammad's life. That was only a nine-year period in which he had this intense jihad, but it shows you by how many pages are devoted to it how important it was. The importance is this. Muhammad, the man, the preacher, the religious man, did not succeed until he turned to jihad. It's only natural that Muslims would look to jihad as its most successful strategy and therefore record the most about it. Now, let's take care of one issue. Muslims frequently say, well, the real jihad is inner struggle, spiritual struggle. That is the greater jihad. The jihad of the sword and war is the lesser jihad. But the hadith tell us that, yes, it is true. There is a greater jihad, the inner struggle, the spiritual struggle. But only 2% of the hadith are devoted to this kind of struggle. The other 98% are about killing the kafir. Is jihad the inner struggle? Yes. Is jihad killing the kafir? Yes. Notice again, we have a duality. There are two ways to view jihad. And depending on which one you need, that is the one that Muslims bring forth. Let's take an example that everyone remembers. On September 11, 2001, the World Trade Towers and the Pentagon were attacked by Muslims in an act of jihad. It was said by Muslims that they had hijacked their religion. But let's look and see. Because when you understand jihad as it comes from the Quran, the Sirah, and the Hadith, you will discover that everything about 9-11 was by the book. Let's start with the fact that this was not the first time the World Trade Tower had been attacked by jihadists. In 1993, an attempt was made to bring down the World Trade Towers by a massive bomb placed in the basement. This didn't work. But that didn't matter, because the second time it did... And the second time was preceded by drill after drill, again and again. They went over the procedures. When it all came down on September 11th, they had been through it many times. This is modeled on the example of Muhammad. When Muhammad turned to jihad, the first time he sent out his men to kill and rob, they failed. They didn't find anybody. Nor on the second time, the third time nor even on the seventh time. But when they went out on the eighth time, they were successful. 9-11 was just like Muhammad's jihad. Another way it was like jihad is that Muslims after 9-11 said, oh, we're the real victims. We're the ones who were really hurt. Again, this is precisely like Muhammad did it. When his eighth attack was successful, he was accused by the Arabs of violating all the rules of war because he had attacked during the holy month of Ramadan. The Quran replied to this and said that what the Meccans, 
the Kafirs had done to Muhammad was far more serious than being killed. Now the Arabs of Mecca had run Muhammad out of Mecca, but they didn't harm anybody. When the Muslims came around and killed Kafirs, they said, you know, we're the real victims here, not the dead people, not the Kafirs. Another way in which 9-11 was modeled after Muhammad is this. It was claimed, oh, we are a religion of peace. The veil of the religion of Islam was used to hide the political act of jihad. This has been done before as well. Muhammad always covered his political actions with a religious necessity. The World Trade Towers were chosen as a target for two reasons. The first reason was it was a trade center, a business center. It was the hope of al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden that destroying the World Trade Towers would paralyze the American economy. Because you see, jihad, wherever possible, is an economic attack. Muhammad's attacks on the caravans was to gain wealth for himself and to remove wealth from the coffers. When he attacked cities, he would destroy the plantations, the farms outside the city. This was an economic warfare, and 9-11 was an economic attack. Now, the second reason that the World Trade Towers were attacked was that Zawahiri, seemingly the key planner, was told that there were a lot of Jews there. This, again, was just like Muhammad, because Muhammad persecuted the Jews of Medina and the Kaibar and Fadak. So, killing Jews in jihad was what Muhammad did. Another way that 9-11 was modeled after Muhammad's actions is this. The men who did it were immigrants to this country. And Muhammad did not take up jihad until he too was an immigrant. Because you see, he was driven from Mecca, and when he moved to Medina, he called that his immigration. How important is this immigration? Well, Islamic time starts when he entered Medina. When jihad was first started was with the immigrants. That's the reason why all Islamic calendars start with that time, not with Muhammad's first revelation, which might seem to be the time zero for Islam. Time zero is chosen because of immigration, which was the beginning of Muhammad as a politician and a warrior. Another way this is modeled after Muhammad was it was a sneak attack. Muhammad's attacks were always sneak attacks wherever possible. So on 9-11, when we woke up to terror and fire, it was just like Muhammad would have done it. Now this may seem trivial, but those who were attacked were kafirs, and jihad is always against the kafir, again, just like Muhammad. Another way that the attack on the World Trade Towers was modeled after Muhammad is this. It violated the rules of war. One of the reasons that Muhammad always beat the Arabs was this. They kept thinking that he would play by the rules. After all, before Muhammad, there were established rules of war. But when Muhammad developed jihad, he threw out all the rules. Brother would kill brother. Father would kill son. Tribe member would go to war against another tribe member. This violated all the rules of Arab war. But Muhammad knew how to win, and that was to violate the rules. Another way that September 11th was very Islamic was there was no shame or remorse inside of the Islamic community. The most popular book in the Arab world after 9-11 was written by a man who had shared a jail cell with Zawahiri. And his criticism of Zawahiri was this, not that what they had done was immoral. No, what was wrong was it woke the sleeping tiger, America. There was no remorse over 3,000 dead coffers because there's nowhere in Muhammad's life did he ever express the slightest remorse over the death of a coffer. Indeed, we have records in which he laughed and cheered 
when coffers died. And we found that here in America, there were Muslims out in the street, cheering, just like Muhammad. Here's an interesting thing about the attack on the World Trade Towers. Two days after it happened, the telephones began to ring in churches all across America. And when the church member picked up the phone, the other person said, I'm a Muslim, and we would like to come to your church and give a seminar on Islam, the peaceful religion. Now, this was a great deception, but it was also done with amazing speed and power. Think about it. Do you know of any other group, Democrat, Republican, the military, anything in the world, that could, with only 48 hours' notice, launch a uniform attack across an entire nation? Islam is a political unit, and that's the only way that it is important to us, not the religion, but its politics. September 11th was a political attack with religious motivation, yes, but it was a political attack. Another way that September 11th was modeled after Muhammad is this. We were called to Islam before the attack. And that was Muhammad's way also. Osama bin Laden issued a videotape in which he condemned America and then called America to Islam. If America had come to Islam, I guess in this case if George Bush had decided to become a Muslim, then there would not have been an attack. But the call to Islam was issued first. And this is in exact obeyance to Muhammad's perfect jihad. Another way that September 11th was pure Muhammad was this. It was a defensive attack. That's right. It was a defensive attack. All jihad is defensive because the kafir creates the first offense by denying Muhammad. So the kafir has already offended Allah. So therefore, what follows after being offended is a defensive attack. If it were not for the kafir, there would be no jihad. And this brings us to something that we need to know. Jihad is incumbent upon all Muslims, and jihad is eternal. Jihad is not to cease until the last kafir is off the face of the earth. Now, this has important implications, because there are many people, many people in the media, in religious groups, in government, who think, you know, if we treat Muslims right, the jihad will stop. Well, it doesn't work that way. As long as there are coffers, there will be jihad. Soon after 9-11, Islam launched a counterattack in the form of the attack of the coffers as crusaders. Now, the crusades are portrayed by Islam in somewhat the same vein as Auschwitz, that is, it was the greatest evil by the kafir. But you need to understand the Crusades before you feel embarrassed about them. Why were the Crusaders going to an Arab Muslim Middle East? And who were they helping? And why did the Christians cry out for help? Because that's how it all started. It wasn't a bunch of Europeans who saddled up their horses and went over just to kill Muslims. They went over there in a response as a plea for help because the suffering of the Christians in the Middle East was too great to bear. We also have to remember how Islam came there. Islam came to Jerusalem and the Middle East with a sword, the sword wielded by Umar, the second caliph. There was great destruction. So indeed, the Crusades are one of the few times that a kafir turned to help another kafir when they're attacked by jihad. Now let's deal with something else. We have said that jihad is incumbent upon all Muslims. And yet, when you go to work, if there's a Muslim who works at your place, they don't come in with dynamite strapped to their chest and blow everybody up. But they still participate in jihad. After 9-11, one of the most effective things that the FBI did was to start following the money and it was discovered that Muslims all across the United States had given quite generously to what are called charities. 
and when the money was given, it was understood that it was to support jihad. So when a Muslim writes a check to support jihad, he is a jihadist. When a Muslim says, oh, no, 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 jihad, holy war, that is not our way. Our way is the religion of peace. That is an act of jihad. The biggest jihad that's going on in America today is by Saudi Arabia and other Middle East countries. And they're not using the sword. They're using the dollar. The Saudis, Saudi Arabia, spend 10 times as much money each year as the Soviet Union did to spread communism. And what the Saudis are spreading is Islam and Sharia. They pump enormous amounts of money into this country. Most mosques are built with Saudi money and then staffed by an imam chosen by the Saudis. There are great numbers of Islamic schools being built in America. But the worst part of the money is being spent to affect our politics. Washington, D.C. is awash with money from the Middle East, and this money is used to buy votes and influence people, launch political campaigns. If you're a Muslim and want to run for political office in this country, you will not have trouble with financing your campaign. Any Muslim who wants to do anything to advance Islam in this country fundamentally has a blank check to do whatever they want. Jihad can be done with money, and the Saudis are using money extensively. And this is just like Muhammad, because Muhammad's dying words were these, neither Jew nor Christian shall be left in Arabia. And... Keep giving the money to influence the Kafir ambassadors. And that's what the Saudis are doing. They are influencing the Kafir ambassadors and doing it very well. Another place that the Muslims use their money to advance jihad is in our educational system. No textbook that teaches about Islam in our schools can be used unless it is approved by a Muslim committee. Think about that for a moment. So as a consequence, the only Islam that is studied in our schools is a glorious religion, a glorious political system. There's no mention ever made of the killing of 270 million coffers over 1,400 years. There is no mention in these textbooks of the demi, a semi-slave that we will spend more time studying later. Islam spreads in the textbook in our schools without any suffering at all. And it is called a golden political system. This is jihad. But the educational jihad doesn't stop with textbooks. The Saudis have pumped a large amount of money into Middle East history departments, Arabic departments, religion. They have pumped large amounts of money into our universities to influence how History and religion and politics are taught. Large sums of money are pumped into professorships supported by the Saudis. The whole business of studying Islam in our universities does so with a curriculum that is approved by the Saudis. So the jihad by the dollar in our education system is far more dangerous than the jihad by sword. Another example of jihad is the fact that anyone in the media who makes a comment, say on a talk radio show, that Muslims don't like, first will come the phone calls of pressure, and if the host doesn't yield, then are threatened lawsuits. Muslims are using our own civil rights laws with great effect to intimidate and make sure that no one ever says anything about Islam that Muslims don't like, because you see, freedom of speech is not Sunnah. Freedom of speech is not Islamic. Speech must be controlled, and it must be controlled by Muslims if you're going to speak about Muslims. Great amounts of money are being spent to intimidate any of those who would speak up against Islam. And against Islam here just means telling the truth about Islam. The truth is can put you into court if the Muslims decide to sue you. In the end, it is not the jihad that is so important in our culture. 
What is so important is we do not have any understanding of what is going on. We don't understand that when money is used to influence our politicians, that that is jihad. We don't understand when we invite an imam to a church to have explained to us what Islam really is, that that is jihad. So it is not that Islam is so strong, but that we know so little, and that makes us so very, very weak. Brought to you by the Center for the Study of Political Islam.